Hello, my name is Dr. Ominde and I'm and we're going to use um, the layered approach as if we are dissecting um, the arm. So, um, so these are the objectives. So you start with the cutaneous or rather the skin which we have the dermatomes and remember the definition of a dermatome is a skin segment innervated by a single spinal nerve. After that, we go to the fascia, then which is just connective um, tissue, muscles, blood supply, innervation, applied anatomy. And remember, there's definitely osteology. So as you're getting from the skin, the last thing that you will encounter is the bone. So these are the surface anatomy of the upper limb. Remember, um, you have this um, is formed by your biceps brachii this is formed by triceps brachii and this protrusion here or bulge is by the deltoid this is your electron process and the lateral epicondyle of the humerus now what you see here this is the median cubital vein this is your cubital fossa and this is your groove for brachial artery this is a biceps brachii and the vein that you see here is cephalic towards the lateral aspect and medially that's the basilic vein this bulge here is by brachial radialis muscle so that's what you see on surface anatomy of the upper limb about cutaneous innervation remember on the lateral aspect you have um, upper lateral cutaneous innervation of arm from axillary that's the uh, dermatome at this region c5 lower cutaneous um, nerve on the lateral aspect is by radio then on the forearm the lateral cutaneous is by musculocutaneous then when you come to the hand the lateral three and a half is by median on the palmar surface and the um, medial one and a half is by ulna okay remember c5 is at the rudimentary badge region then the c6 is at the thumb then the longest uh, finger you have c7 dermatome then at this area you have c8 t1 around the arm and t2 is at the axilla Co uh, innervated by intercostal brachial branch. So the median cutaneous nerve of arm is from the medial cord. Posterior cutaneous nerve of arm is from the radial, from the posterior aspect. Then the medial cutaneous of forearm is also from the medial cord. Okay, then when you look at the posterior aspect, posterior cutaneous of radial and the posterior aspect, lower cutaneous, lateral cutaneous from radial, upper lateral, we've said is from axilla, and then axillary nerve, then the lateral. Uh, medial, sorry, medial cutaneous of forearm on the medial aspect, while lateral cutaneous of forearm we've said is from muscular cutaneous. So posterior cutaneous of arm and posterior cutaneous of forearm is by radial nerve and also the lower lateral portion of the arm. Then the lateral three and a half on the dorsum is by radial nerve except at the, the distal phalanges, the skin over the distal phalanges, which will be by median uh, nerve. So the dorsum of the hand, lateral three and a half radio, except the dorsum at the distal phalanges, while the uh, palmar three and a half is by median. Both dorsum and palmar one and a half, medial one and a half is by ulna. So C5, rudimentary badge region, thumb C6, the longest finger C7, C8, T1 on the medial aspect of the, of the arm, and T2 is the dermatome of the axilla so those are the dermatomes okay so you can see c5 here t2 around the axilla t1 then c8 on the small finger c7 these three of them and c6 is on your thumb so we go to the fascia we start from skin you get to superficial fascia then deep fascia deep fascia of the arm is a brachial fascia what are the modifications you have intermuscular septa medial and lateral intermuscular septa and together with the bone the deep fascia and the intermuscular septa compartmentalizes the arm into the anterior flexor compartment and the posterior extensor compartment so this is the extensor compartment with the three head brachii this is your anterior compartment you have your brachialis here coracobrachialis and the two heads of biceps brachii the long head and the brevis and then these are the neurovascular structures cephalic vein on the lateral aspect basilic vein on the medial aspect this is the brachial artery and remember we have nerves in the muscular cutaneous supplying the anterior compartment radial nerve supplying muscles in the posterior compartment but we have the median nerve around the brachial artery that's going to traverse to get to supply muscles in the forearm 
So this is how the deep fascia of the arm looks like. And these are your superficial uh, vessels. This is your median cubital vein. This is your cephalic vein going upwards towards the deltopectoral groove. So the cephalic vein drains the upper limb from the, um, um, the lateral aspect and basilic drains from the um, medial aspect of the, of the uh, distal part. And at the cubital fossa, there's a communication between the two by median cubital vein. Then we see the basilic going um, to join brachial to form axillary vein, while the cephalic passes in the uh, deltopectoral groove to go and empty into axillary vein. So the cephalic vein is a lateral continuation of the dorsal venous arc. So that's the origin. It originates as a lateral continuation of dorsal venous arc. It ascends in the superficial fascia along the lateral aspect of forearm and hand and arm. It will therefore pass through the deltopectoral triangle and empty into the axillary vein. So this is your cephalic vein through deltopectoral groove to go empty into axillary vein. So it will pierce clavipectoral fascia in the deltopectoral groove and empty into the axillary vein. Basilic vein, on the other hand, is a medial continuation of dorsal venous arc. Cephalic was lateral continuation of dorsal venous arc. So this basilic ascends um, in superficial fascia along the medial aspect of forearm and the arm. When it gets to the middle of the arm, it will pierce deep fascia and ascend in the upper aspect of the arm within the deep fascia. Before that, it was on the superficial fascia. So it will be in the deep fascia, and then it will join the veins around the axillary, uh, it will join the vena commentates of the brachial vein, okay? So it will join, basilic will join brachial vein to form axillary vein, and this occurs at the inferior border of teres major. So axillary vein originates at the inferior border of teres major as a union between basilic vein and brachial vein. So this is your cephalic vein, and this is your basilic vein on the medial aspect, and you can see the anticubitally cephalic continues laterally. So then after that, we go to the muscles of the arm. We have two compartments, extensor compartments with triceps breaker and anconias, and the flexor compartment that contains three muscles, biceps brachii, coracobrachialis, and the brachius brachii, two heads, long head, supraglenoid tubercle, short head from the coracoid process, and then it terminates on the radial tuberosity and the bicipital groove. Brachialis from the lower anterior aspect of the humerus going to in, um, insert onto the the, the arm. So short head of biceps brachii, coracoid process, long head from the supraglenoid tubercle, inserts on the radial tuberosity and bicipital aponeurosis. All muscles in the anterior compartment are innervated by muscular cutaneous. It causes flexion at the shoulder humer uh, sh glenohumeral joint and flexion at the elbow. But when the elbow is flexed, it is the supinator major. It causes supination of the forearm when the elbow is flexed. So this is your biceps brachii coming to insert onto the bicipital aponeurosis and radial tuberosity. So the bicipital aponeurosis, what is aponeurosis? It is a broad aponeurosis of the biceps brachii located in the cubital fossa. Usually it separates the superficial structures from the deep structures in the cubital fossa. It originates from the distal insertion of biceps brachii and runs across the brachial artery. Where is it inserted? It's inserted onto antibrachial fascia of the forearm. So what's the function? It helps to protect brachial artery. Brachial artery is deep to the uh, bicipital aponeurosis. So you're able to protect brachial artery as well as median nerve because these are the um, um, contents, deep contents of the cubital fossa. So they're going to be protected from the median cubital vein. So when you're even carrying out venipuncture of the median cubital vein, around the cubital fossa, these vessels are uh, brachial artery and median nerve are protected from injury. So this is your bicipital aponeurosis here. Protects the brachial artery and median nerve from injury during venipuncture of the median cubital vein. Then we have coracobrachialis from the coracoid process, that's the origin of the scapula, coracoid process of the scapula, and it starts on the middle third of the medial surface of the humerus. What's the action? If you contract like this, this way, 
you will adduct. So it causes adduction and the humerus tends to move anteriorly, so that's flexion. So flexion and adduction of the arm at the glenohumeral joint. All muscles in the anterior compartment are innervated by muscular cutaneous nerve. It's supplied by muscular branches of brachial artery. So it will be pierced by muscular cutaneous nerve. Now we have what you call ligament of struthers. Ligament of struthers is just a fibrous band usually connecting medial epicondyle of the humerus to the supratrochlear spur, which is a downward projection from anterior surface of the humerus. So this truthus ligament, it just represents the remains of a third head of coracobrachialis. So the third head of coracobrachialis is supposed to degenerate, but if it persists, it forms ligament of struthus, and usually this does might compress median nerve. So um, the vessels, you can appreciate the brachial vessels there. And this is your coracobrachialis, and this is median nerve that is in view, and your um, biceps brachii. Biceps brachii is here, coracobrachialis, this is median nerve. So the brachialis is here, it originates from the distal half of the anterior surface of the humerus. The distal half, anterior surface of humerus, inserts onto the coronoid process, okay, and the tuberosity of the ulna. So what is the function? It's definitely going to cause flexion of the forearm, okay? And it's, uh, as all the other muscles in the anterior compartment of the arm, it's innervated by muscular brachial artery, although it can also get blood supply from the recurrent branch of radial artery. So this is your deltoid, this is your biceps brachii, and when you reflect it away, you see your brachialis here, and you can see the muscular branches of muscular cutaneous supplying biceps brachii and the supplying this is muscular chain and supply of biceps brachii and the brachialis so we go to um deltoid because it extends in the arm so we continue with other muscles of the arm the deltoid so deltoid has three parts anterior middle and posterior so the anterior part of deltoid in red originates from anterior border and superior surface of the lateral third of the clavicle, anterior border and superior surface of the lateral third of clavicle, and inserts onto deltoid tuberosity. It's innervated by axillary nerve and causes adduction and flexion as well as internal rotation. Adduction, flexion, internal rotation, anterior fibers of deltoid. The middle fibers of deltoid are above here. They come from lateral margin and superior surface of acromion. Lateral margin and superior surface of acromion also insert on delta tuberosity, also innervated by axillary nerve. When it contracts that direction, it causes abduction. The limb will be lifted up. It causes abduction, and mainly it causes abduction above 15 degrees. The first 15 degrees of abduction are caused by supraspinators. So delta will cause abduction beyond 15 degrees, the superior, the middle fibers. Then the posterior fibers of delta here, from the posterior border of the spine of scapula, from the posterior border of the spine of scapula, also inserts on the delta tuberosity. It's also innervated by axillary nerve. So if it contracts like this, it will cause the limb to move posteriorly. So that's extension. Then it also causes abduction and external rotation. Okay, posterior deltoid cause extension, abduction, and external rotation. Anterior fibers were causing the opposite, flexion, adduction, internal rotation, while middle fibers were causing abduction beyond 15 degrees. So this is your deltoid, inserting onto the deltoid, tuberosity. So um, then the muscles in the posterior compartment, mainly the triceps, so you can see the long head from the supraglenoid tubercle, the lateral head from posterior surface of proximal humerus above the radial groove, and medial head, posterior surface of humerus below radial groove. So long head, infraglenoid tubercle, lateral head, lateral and posterior surface of proximal humerus, and medial head on the distal two-thirds of medial and posterior surface of the humerus. So medial and posterior, lateral head, lateral and posterior surface. Okay, they all insert onto the olecranon process. All are innervated by radial nerve and they cause shoulder extension and adduction. And at the elbow, the triceps brachii cause extension. So this is your radial nerve going to innervate the triceps brachii. Okay, so you can see all these are the triceps uh, breaker. This is radial nerve in the radial groove. This is your deltoid muscle. So um, this is the medial head and this is your ulna nerve in view. Okay. 